All right, so we're here with my Logitech Harmony. Um, I think it's like a 350. I don't remember. They don't seem to sell it anymore on their website. But it allows you to control up to eight devices. So the issue I'm having is the volume up button stopped working basically entirely. Volume down is kind of hit or miss. And some of the buttons up here to select different devices are hit or miss too. They work sometimes, but not always. So you're going to see that this button here turns on both the TV and the soundbar. See, so that came on. And you can sort of barely tell, but the soundbar is indeed on. So if I walk over here so I can get the sound bar, push the button to, for the sound bar, you can see down works, but it only works like sometimes. Up doesn't work at all can rock back and forth, it doesn't work. Press it hard, doesn't work. Again, down, kinda works sometimes. So that's the issue. So let's take this bad boy up to the bench. All right guys, well, apparently I just recorded for, or thought I was recording for like 20 minutes or something, and I wasn't. So we're here. <laughs> Ah, uh, boy. What a way to start 2022. So I don't know how much of this I got on camera, if anything at all. So I'm gonna just put this back together real quick. At least visually. So basically, for crying out loud. Not actually going to put it entirely back together. I'm just going to kind of give you a representation. So here we are with my Harmony 350 remote. Uh, the problem is the volume up and down buttons. Uh, primarily the up button doesn't work at all. The down button is super hit or miss. The device selection sometimes kind of work. Uh, but overall it's just uh, an old remote probably just needs to be taken apart and cleaned. It's a Harmony 350 I believe. They don't seem to sell it anymore. Uh, forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but I, at this point, have no idea what I have recorded and what I have not. Um, they don't seem to sell it anymore. But it, it's a universal remote. It allows you to control up to eight devices. So if you flip it over, I took out the batteries. Um, the batteries I'm using, I'm not going to grab again, but they're Panasonic Eneloops. I just happen to like them. Uh, like I said, and previously which I don't know if it made into the video uh, just trying to do my part to reduce reuse and recycle like they teach in the elementary schools of my day and they they last forever um, you don't have to charge them very often they charge relatively quickly just overall high quality batteries they're nickel metal hydrides um, yeah work great so there were four screws here which are um, PH00, so Phillips00. That's these little guys yonder. Very small. And then under this vanity plate here, two more of those black screws. That allows you to separate these two pieces. Uh, 
and then it looks like this. You can just pull this guy right out after you undo these three. So there's one, two, three screws. They're also pH double zero, so Phillips double zero. There you go. Very tiny, and they have that round. I forget what that type of screw is called, but that round head. It's like a got a little built-in washer. The other ones are essentially um, countersink screws. The black ones, that is. So that will allow you to separate this. You can see all the human gunk. Good times, laughs, and epitaphs throughout there. Shout out to Aesop. Um, I did show you off the chips, so I'll do it again. So it's a micro trip. PIC 18F67J50. Then all that other stuff down there. Pause it if you need it. This thing that looks like a crystal oscillator, oscillizer, whatever those things are called that you see in like Game Boys and things like that. It says H4000H5C. There is the LED and its corresponding notations should you decide you would like to change it. I have no idea what the voltage or any relevant relevant statistics on that would be. You can see the soldering job across this thing is pretty bad. So I'm going to clean up the board and reflow the solder on all these things. Some corrosion on various parts of the board. Very light solder doesn't look like very solid joints. Some captain tape from the factory. I've never taken this guy apart so it certainly wasn't for me. And you can see a little bit of corrosion in some areas. So what I noticed is up here where this finger is, my middle finger, uh, there's some blackness there and then these two pads so the pad right there and the pad right there are dark. A lot darker than the other ones. So it looks like maybe some liquid got in here at one point or something and that's probably why those particular buttons were not working. This is the other side of the remote. So interesting that they dyed or stained half of it. Not the other half. Can you tell I have a cat or two? So I'll set that aside and get that all cleaned up. And actually, if you look here, excuse me, so this would be the volume. Volume up and down, which you can see there. And again, that was my issue, is they weren't working very well at all. And you can see there does appear to be a little bit of liquid in there. So it's not good that liquid's in there obviously, but it's probably just as simple as cleaning it up. Got some uh, cotton buds, cotton swabs, Q-tips, some 91% isopropyl. Uh, also in the last bit of recording, which again, I don't know how much made it into the video or not, uh, I was asking about your holidays. How'd your holidays go? Mine went well. Whatever you celebrate, I hope it went well. We happen to celebrate Christmas around these parts. Um, no particular religious affiliation tied to that. Just the traditional... American practice of good times, fun, family, friends, lots of calories. Uh, we had
had friends and family over on various days. You can see that corrosion coming off. See that greenish color? There too. And once I get this board cleaned up here, I'll once again show you something that the lovely, wonderful, talented, amazing Miss Mrs. Makes and Mods got me for Christmas. I'll give you a hint. This may be the last time that you ever hear me speaking into the microphone of my Corsair headset. So you can see there's still some corrosion coming off. Some of that green green buildup. I don't know. Oh, there you go. Got some big old chunks. I was just off the edge right there. Um, I don't know how much of this is necessary for me to get off for my goal of restoring function to those buttons. But that shit ain't supposed to be there, so let's just try to get as much of it off as we can. And again, I'm just giving the rest of the board a little once over as well. Because why not? We're in here. Looks like that's most of it. I don't know if that right there is stained or not. But no more is coming off on the cotton bud here. So we'll flip over to the other side. Same thing, just giving the whole board a nice little clean. It's certainly not going to hurt anything. So this is one of the reasons I hate using cotton buds. All those little fibers. I know you can buy like, uh, you can buy some that aren't they're not supposed to do that. Uh, Thermal Grizzly, for example, includes some that are, at the very least, supposed to be less cotton thread producing uh, that they include with their thermal pastes, thermal products, thermal interface materials. And I think they sell them separately, but I don't remember. That's why typically I like using a brush. But this seemed appropriate for the goal. So I'm sticking with it. All right, so we'll set that aside for now. As far as the shell and everything, I'm going to um, just give that a bath. Uh, I'm going to take a bath with it, uh, put in my little rubber ducky in the bathtub, get my candles, my bath bombs. Uh, in my experience, that's the best way to do it. Uh, they added, you know, Epsom salts and, and, uh, you know, jojoba oil and frankincense all help to remove various human cruds. So that's the only way that I do it. Just like 
earlier when I forgot to press play on the record. I only make professional mistakes. So, we'll be back after bath time with the remote. Alright folks, we are back with <coughs> a brand new attack or something. Back with a nice, fresh, clean remote stack here. But before we get to that, I told you I would tell you about <coughs> some of the gifts that Mrs. Makes and Mods presented me for Christmas. So the first, ah, SM58 by Sure, the legendary vocal microphone. So this is an SM58 by Sure. It's a cardioid dynamic microphone, and it is the reason why this may be the last video for me where you hear me speaking into the Corsair headset that I'm using now. Super excited to use that but it is an XLR based microphone and you cannot use XLR based microphones without some sort of adapter for your computer if you plan to use it that way so that's where this comes in it is the complete audio too. Bum bum bum. So this this is an audio interface by uh, Native Instruments. Super excited to get this all set up. It's got a nice little dial here. Case is plastic. It's like uh, well it's like aluminum. It's like a cheap aluminum, and this is plastic. Actually, it might all be plastic. I'm not entirely sure. It sounds... Sounds like there might be a metal structure in there. Um, but it feels kind of plasticky, but it also feels kind of cold. Anyway, the Complete Audio 2 has two XLR slash whatever these are called. I forget what the inside of that is. XLR is the outside adapter, or the outside port. The inside port, I forget what that's called. Um, but it allows for two. Either a microphone and an instrument, or two instruments, or two microphones. And then it's USB. So you run it over USB to your computer. Super excited to get that going. That'll be great for the podcast as well can't remember at this point if I mentioned the podcast on this particular recording, but I do have a podcast with uh, my buddy Josh, where we discuss basically whatever the hell we want to talk about. Um, so far, we've talked about things like gaming, content creation, uh, what it takes to be a gamer, who is a gamer, who isn't a gamer. Um, movies, music, the relatively recent Grammys, or the most recent Grammys, um, and future topics are going to include various conspiracy theories, um, what conspiracy theories make sense, what actually is a conspiracy theory, not just the colloquial term. Uh, we're going to talk about aliens, UFOs, politics, religion. Uh, the dreaded human malware, a.k.a. that illness that you've probably had that I definitely had earlier in the year. Um, yeah, basically whatever we want to talk about. So again, the uh, podcast is called Conversation Quests. Uh, we typically live stream that over on twitch.tv slash conversation quests. And then we put the VOD up for as long as Twitch will allow it after it's live. And then the VOD also goes up on YouTube. So come join us. We'd love to have you. Back to this particular situation. Mm, 
So you can see the remote shell cleaned up very nicely. Just cleaned it with some warm soapy water. And it's not perfect. You know, there's still a little bit of dust and stuff in there, but it's way better than it was. And that's the goal. You can see this is a well-loved remote. It's got some scratches and stuff on it. But that's how she blows. I did not remove the battery terminals. Um, typically, I would recommend that you do just to avoid rust. However, if you wash it quickly, dry it quickly, you should be fine. Um, I've done it both ways without issue. I've removed battery terminals and things that are easy to remove and devices where they're easy to remove and I've left them in as I've cleaned uh, which is what I did this time without any issue and here's how the button membranes came out again not perfect we're not going for perfection we're just going for substantially cleaner and more functional than they were before. I am a little curious though if I can get them just an extra little bit cleaner with some cotton buds and alcohol. We'll try it out. see it's oh maybe you can't maybe you can't it's coming up a little uh, a little dirtier the cotton bud that is which is a good sign if you're trying to clean something but the warm soapy water did most of the work so see discoloration compared to this end that's the clean end again certainly not necessary but I already took it apart so why not give her a little bit of love remember I showed you that back backside of the volume buttons would be these here volume up and volume down that's where that just came from so I'm pretty confident that this is going to restore it back to full function still bringing up some gunk there which would be great because this I should have done this ages ago <laughs> like over a year ago excuse me when the issue first cropped up but it progressively got worse to where before this buttons were completely unusable and yesterday Mrs. Makes and Mods said we should just get a new remote I was like nah nah your boy needs you to just clean it that's almost certainly the issue. And I'm glad I took it apart. 
and did just that because pretty confident that that's going to be it. My, uh, in my experience over the years, a lot of times that's really all your devices need is a quick clean, some TLC, maybe a re, uh, reflowing of some solder joints. You know, pretty basic stuff most of the time. And even when that's not the case, it could be something as simple as a capacitor you know, a quick recap job. Be that one capacitor or the um, all the capacitors on that particular device. A little bit of a little more crud right there. Yep. See that? Ew. Maybe I should keep that uh that but cotton bud I just showed you and show it to Mrs. Makes and Mods when she gets home and tell her it came from my ear. I, mean, I don't know what's going on, babe. I think the aliens are coming. All right. That seems to be good there. Get Let me get in these little slots here a little bit. Just because I have it open and why not? Rub it over the battery contacts just to get any little bit of moisture that's still down in there, but I think it's all good looks just fine looks dry I think we good baby oh yeah on the back that uh, sticker residue not going to spend too much time on it, but if I can get it off, that would be nice. Probably not even going to put that stupid vanity plate back on there, because if you've seen any of my videos, you know I'm not a big fan of uh, companies putting their logos on everything. And, you know, big super obvious ways as if you know that's the only way that you could possibly advertise something or make money um, try a little trick I I've seen uh, Mako do if you haven't checked out Mako uh, check his channel he mostly focuses on Game Boy mods uh, all the Game Boys. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Micro, Game Boy Macro, DMG, uh, Game Boy Color, etc. But he'll use, he'll cut a Q-tip like this, so you have that um, cardboard piece there. 
and use that as a more essentially a rougher abrasive to uh, remove corrosion and things like that especially like on power switches I've seen him use it there but I believe it's uh, M-A-K-H-O is how you spell it I have him linked in the description just because I've been watching his channel for a while and I've been uh, definitely been inspired uh, by him so I just try to shout out any people in my description that I follow that I um, that I think maybe you haven't heard of for example like he's a relatively small creator or uh, just people that I think bring a lot of value no I don't know him he probably has no idea I exist But it's done a lot for the Game Boy, the Game Boy scene, the Game Boy modding scene. Mamma Jamma back together. How's this work? Where do those screw? Okay. So the motherboard is going to slot in here. a little bit basically gonna slot in like that and you can tell it's correct by looking at the little reliefs cut into the PCB for the screw posts right there and right there and right there and right there Same thing up top here. Your leaf's up there. And then the little pads. Slot in just like so. not remove the battery context, so I don't have to worry about that. Oh yeah, I forgot there were all those tabs. So that clicks together just so. This... Oh, it goes underneath there. Alright, so I'll probably have to pull that out. Okay. I'm going to pop those tabs again. Again, not using a ton of pressure here. Just kind of working my way along the tabs. Right, so it goes together nicely. That's good. Get all this fuzz off from those cotton buds. That would be nice. I did mention I was going to reflow some of the solder, but I don't want to do that yet. 
because I want to know if that alone fixed it. So I'm trying to limit the variables here. So this guy, I think actually what would be best is to slot it in this way and then screw those silver screws with the little built-in washers in. Then take it downstairs and try it out. I'm not even going to put all three of them in. Just going to put in the top one and the bottom one. Just so it's held in. Actually, this one seems to be stripping two. Try the pH zero again. They both stripped them, but the pH zero I think is the correct size. They're just really low quality screws. All right, so that should be enough to hold it with just those two screws. I'm gonna slide this back on here. I'm not even worried about this piece right now. I'm just lining up the bottom And then I'm gonna, you see it's closed there. Then I'm just gonna flip it over, press it together. There we go. All right, and I will meet you downstairs. Oh, hello there. How'd you get here? How'd you find me? I'm watching you. Yes, you. Anyway. I'm back here with our remote to see if she works. Oh, we got the batteries in. You see I slid and put that top piece on. All right, how did I do this last time? I think it was like this to get you in the shot. So, let's try it. Okay, those are both on. That's great news. A little bit closer so you can see the sound bar. Because that's what I'll be controlling. Not in the frame here. So right now, up is not working, right? Oh, but it is. It's set to TV, which I don't want. I keep that on zero. Turn the sound bar. There we go. Just like that, she works again. That is success. Awesome. So you can see it's still not 100%. But I think that's just a result of how the button is shaped. Because if I try to switch real quick, it's not super successful. Oh, actually it looks like it is. But if I just take my time, just take a like second between each press, 
It works most of the time. Before it didn't work at all, so that's a huge improvement. I'm going to call it a win, and we'll go complete this video upstairs. You. You. Right there. I see you. Follow me around again in my own home. I'm watching you. Anyway, we're back. And as you saw, she works. Oopsie. Oh. Hashtag XLH life is real. Alright. So let's get this apart and back together again. Remember we just press this, press fit this with the tabs. Um, we did not put any screws in. Excuse me. So be able to pop these tabs off and there's tabs on both sides as you can see the separation here should be able to get it apart just with a little bit of pressure at this stage okay so the final screw on the inside is this silver one goes right here in the middle little trick in case you're unaware is to back the screw out a little bit till you feel it click and slot down in and then start tightening it that way you don't cross anything cross thread anything especially on these uh, plastic screw bosses You know, I did say I was going to reflow some of the solder. Just because I'm in here. I don't really feel like doing it. Starting to um, get into what I call the bad times colloquially how uh, my wife and I refer to when the pain from the XLH gets um, starts to get pretty bad so I don't feel like spending any more time on this than I already have really but it's gonna drive me nuts if I don't you see that gap there Which my little pointy device See right there? That gap between the screw and the motherboard? That might be because I cross threaded the um, plastic screw boss and it's not sitting flush. It's also going to drive me nuts. So, I'm going to back that out. Back this screw out. It'll only take a couple seconds to reflow those joints. Uh, we'll start on this side. So turn my fan on, turn my iron on. Forgot I unplugged my iron. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't. All right, got a little bit of flux here. Bring you in a lot tighter. Well, hello. Nice and intimate lag. That should be good, right? So we're going to work on these joints right here. 
a little bit of flux. Just using my J tip here. shot. How's that? Yeah, that's pretty good. There we go. And that side. Same thing. So you can see those joints have much more solder on them now than they did before. They do look a little cold. Try and heat them back up. Oh. Losing the little guy. Don't want to lose that. Oh. Pushed it. Much further back. <laughs> look at those legs now. I think that's fine though. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rest this underneath so that guy doesn't go flopping around. Heat up these joints again. So even though they're cold, you see how it's hazy like that? I'm not worried about it. Um, there's a lot more solder on there, so the joint itself should be a lot stronger. That was my goal. Just to get a nice, strong joint. Go around here. Oh yeah, it was the uh, USB. That was uh, a little bit concerned about or at least I talked about before. So let me get in there. Whoopsie. That's not working because it's round. This should be good enough. So the same thing here. Oh, forgot some flux. Put my iron down for a second. A little flux. A little bit of solder on my tip. it up, introduce some solder, there we go. So you can see that joint looks much stronger now, right? And it's nice and shiny. That's the goal. Same thing in here. On this side, heat that pad up. It's a little bit more difficult to get to. go nice and shiny and much more structurally sound same thing over here I'll give you a little close-up so the joints on top here are the ones I just reflowed joints on the bottom how little solder there is and how it looks cold it's kind of hazy like that that's what I'm trying to fix it's mostly just a uh, 
an aesthetic thing since the port functions just fine uh, at this stage, but it's also reinforcing reinforcing that joint to hopefully prevent issues in the future. Bring it back up, give you a close up. So you see on the bottom there, this joint here. Doesn't want to just reflow. You see how it's nice and shiny. And there's a lot more solder than this joint here. That's the goal. Hold that spawn. Can you, can you hold this for me? Spawn. Ow. Thank you. Uh, back to this joint. Let's do it maybe this way. Yeah. Heat up the joint, introduce some solder. Here we go. Check that joint now. Much better. Let's go to the battery terminals next. A little before shot. See there's a lot more solder on this, on these joints, which is typically better for strength um, than having you know, just a super thin layer, but it looks ugly. Uh, and I like to do this kind of stuff to serve as both practice for myself, because I don't have a ton of experience soldering, um, but also for aesthetic reasons, I just think it looks better. And it helps the, uh, the joint. Introduce heat. Introduce some solder. There we go. Get it molten. Oopsie. That's something I didn't consider. Let's try this again. Get it molten. Oh no! Alright, so this might screw up the shot, but I think I'm going to have to put my fat hand in the way. Just so I can see it. Get that solder molten. Get that in there. Alright, so what we're going to have to do that ain't working. Oops. Raise you up. Get this guy into the picture. This is my pan of ice if you haven't seen it before. Uh, it's going to be the best way here. off if I want to use this, which I don't want to do. open as it goes. Oh, sweet. Got plenty of room. Alright. 
So it's not in there super solid, but it doesn't have to be. For this particular task. Introduce some more flux under these joints. Clean my tip. Grab my solder. I'm using uh, 325 right now as the temperature on my iron, by the way. Actually, I think there's enough solder on there, so I should be able to heat this up. Pop that off, that's fine. Get that molten. Now this guy should sit right back in here. See this little t um, slot right here? Oop. What's gonna go in there? This little tab here. This one's bent 90 degrees from the factory. It rests across the board. This one goes in the slot. So. I might have to take that guy out of there to get this board. to take because I lengthen these essentially I push those legs through might have to just pull that dude out of there let's just get him out before I do that I don't know if this is a polarity important um, component but you see the shape of it how this back side here is round and the side here is flat that's how it is right now and it works just fine so I'm going to make sure I replace it with those directions in mind I don't know what this is or if polarity matters, so just a safe, safe practice. I'm just gonna heat both of these up. Oop, I may not actually need to go all the way out. See that it didn't fall. I may not need it to. There we go boards in there much more securely. Back to my spot here. Like I said, forgive me if you can't see this. Get this section here molten. Uh, I can't get it at that angle. again. There we go. We're in. Nice. Get it nice and molten. 
that's about as straight as it's gonna go. So the joint looks ugly, right? But it's structurally much more sound than it was before, I think. Um, it may be because this is unleaded solder and I'm using leaded solder. I'm not sure. Try one more time. Clean the tip of my iron here. Just put a little bit of solder on there, on the tip of my iron, just to coat it at a healthiest amount of flux. Healthiest as uh, a the addition of healthy and copious, by the way, in case you didn't know. So I'm just going to use these to apply pressure, a little bit of downward pressure. And I'm going to slip the iron in. Oh. Try that again. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to grab it. I'm all out of solder wick too, by the way, or I just removed this solder. Bent it back a little bit. Try again. Ooh, got some of that crap off there. seems just fine to me. I'll do the same thing here. Introduce the heat. it a little bit so I'm going to heat that back up tilt it back this way flux from both of them I could tape them down I just don't have any tape with me right now heat it back up heat it till it goes molten that one moves a lot more. I can just put flux on my nose. Alright, last one. Okay, so that's that. Much happier with those joints. 
and how they came from the factory. Loosen this up. This guy out of the way. Pull you back in. And there should be enough heat. Not heat, uh, solder. Load up some flux. Should be enough solder on the pins already. So I'm just going to heat this up. And work on pushing it back through. Which seems like it actually may be easier to do from this side. So that's interesting. Flux. I know you're off screen, but just hang on. Ooh. All right. So, what I think happened is it just fell enough out to where the alignment is not correct anymore. So I'm just going to very gently grab it with the pliers here and pull it right off just like that. Sorry, right now I'm just using the iron to remove some of the solder that's on there. Same thing on the board here. Clean these pads up a little bit. Okay. Add some more flux. And add some fresh solder. Same over here. component and you remember wasn't sure if polarity matters so the see that flat side the flat side there you go that's gonna go towards the motherboard and that's based on how it was in there before I do not know if polarity matters on this particular component I'm just going to try to push it back the way that it was. Use this for grip. Those battery terminals are in the way. It's kind of annoying. Lift you up because you may not be able to see otherwise. this way. Just hanging off the edge here. Alright. 
again, forgive me if I'm blocking your view, but I can't see this. It's never going back in place. tell if we're in the slots or not. I think so. Oh, I'm certainly in that one. There we go. All right, so now we're poking through. Got a bridge on the back side. No big deal, clear that up. Some more flux. Oh no. I thought we were clear. I'm just going to use the tip here. Try and remove some solder. Rossman says more flux is more better. I gotta go with that. certainly flux on both sides of that. Just try again. Getting this bad boy off the edge here. Again, sorry if you can't see this.
Now I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to hold the component from the other side. Or I suppose I might be able to just rest it on a tool like this. Slide you guys up. Try it this way. Oh. How'd that happen? There we go. Ha! Punk. So you can see that now the legs are all the way through. What I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna see if it fits. Excuse me. It fits if it fits in the shell. on the other side. Those holes do. Yeah, we good, baby. Cool little cucumbers in this house or something. This. Stick that under there just to hold that component. This should be the last little little bit yonder. Okay. Get it there. Oh. Always make sure your vent is on. Because you don't want these fumes. They ain't good. Definitely better than it was, and it fits. If you have cats, you know if it fits, it sits. As far as I can tell, Should be a wrap. Before I cut that, let me make sure. No, I, I think it's 100% fine. I'm gonna cut, cut those legs. See how long they are. Can't be having that. Bring my cutters in. Well, actually, let's do this. Bend them. Where am I? There we go. So I just bent the legs. There we go. That's a better way. So 
Sorry for brushing the mic. I'm just going to cut them off. Of course, I had them the wrong way. That's a much more reasonable, good looking joint right there. Sweet. Sweet. I like. Back up. Can't get to those pieces. Okay, so I think probably gonna gotta gonna gotta do it the other way. Oh yeah. Almost forgot to clean up all my flux. So the flux I use is uh, a no clean flux. But that said, I still like to clean it up. Just like to have a nice clean board if I can. I said I prefer using a toothbrush or some sort of brush. Look at that, no fibers. Probably easier to do it this way. Just magnetize my screwdriver there. I always forget that this little, uh, sorry, this little um, I fix it kit that. My wife got me ages ago. Has a little magnet in it. Um, here we go, this one. You can see it's got a magnet, positive and negative side on it. So you can either stick that in the driver and use it to grab lost, lost screws, or you can actually do what I just did and use it to magnetize the end of the bit. I was having before is the terminals. They don't want to go in. So they line up in these slots here. So we'll try again. You 
can barely see it in there. But that's what I'm where I'm focusing on. This guy has to go in here first, like that, and then around the port. Terminals are in. So we should just be able to click her back together. And I'm very confident that this is going to work. Uh, since we tried it already, and it worked just fine. So I have no reason to think it's just going to magically stop working. put all the screws in. So that was those three silver ones. And now six black ones. switch back to the double zero because the bit's a little bit longer so that'll help me in these recessed screws and I think actually these heads might be double zeros while the other ones were just regular zeros just one zero single zero And be sure to not cross thread, but cross um, secure. So what I mean by that is I started here in the top right, we'll say, and then I screwed a screw into the vase on the bottom left, and back to the, uh, sorry, that was top left. Top left first, bottom left second, top right third, the idea there. Oh, excuse me. Or something similar to that is just so that you're applying relatively even pressure. And make sure you got all the screws in before you tighten everything down for the final time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Got the four there. One, two, three, four. And five, six up there. I think feels okay. We'll do a final. Final tightening. Uh, by no means do these have to be super tight or anything. I just want to make sure the shell comes together nice. Nicely. Alright. Oh, what do I do with the batteries? Batteries are in. 
can see. Button lights up. First, well, I don't know what order I'm going to post these, but this is the first project. <sighs> Um, that I've started and completed of 2022, so it's nice to do it with a win. Peace out for now, friends and fam. Like I said, uh, follow the podcast. Come check us out. Conversation Quests on YouTube, twitch.tv slash conversation quests, where we live stream the podcast. And the VODs go up later on both YouTube and Twitch. We also have a Facebook page. It's Conversation Quests. Um, no odd spelling or anything. And then Twitter is essentially it's Conversatin because uh, of the text limit. So it's C O N V E R S A T N and then Quest with no S. So Q U E S T. That's the only one that's spelled odd, and that's just because Twitter has a limit on their. Um, profile name characters essentially everywhere else it's just conversation and quests as in multiple as always thanks for coming along here and I invite you back to help me make and modif make modify and motivate in the future right here on makes and mods farewell friends <laughs>